All right, all right, all right. We've got a big best of five match here. First round, round of 16 match between Oliveira and the bottom left side here of Altitude. This is, of course, Pigfest 3.0, the opening round of the tournament. And Oliveira, the reigning world champion, the people's hero, a man who is an absolute legend. He has really developed a story for himself over that world championship run. But right now, in the first round, he runs into a player that's such a tough match for him in Solar. And the reason is, we did this off the Illigulac rankings. So we didn't base it off, you know, weighting that world championship heavier. And these guys are very similarly ranked players who are roughly middle of the pack for the top 16 players in this tournament. And, you know, the, the way seeding works, rank 1 versus rank 16, rank 2 versus, you know, rank 15, that sort of thing. The guys in the middle end up eating each other, and that's a very tough match because Solar, repping onside gaming, has a 90% series win rate. 28 wins, 4 losses versus Oliveira. A massive, staggering advantage. On the other hand, Solar does that to most Terrans, everyone except Maru and Pion. And Oliveira, he was most Terrans. He was an exceptionally talented Terran who was in the top 7 or 8 Terrans in the world. Uh, maybe, maybe as low as rank 10, maybe as high as rank 5 sometimes. But he was never any greater than that until recently at the World Championship, where he became the People's Hero, defied all expectations, and won the World Championship, defeating all the best players in the world. Reina, Hero, Maru, every single matchup. Hero, Marine, Clem, Cure. And whilst he was probably popping off most of all for his Terran vs. Terran, and his TVP's been looking very effective as well, I do think this is the hardest matchup for him, but if you can reversal Reina, well, you can definitely take down Solar as well. It's a very different matchup of styles. And Altitude map one goes in Solar's favor. Solar was the higher seed, so he did pick this map first. He picked two Vito first, but then also get the first map pick. Babylon map two for Oliveira, map two Dragon Scales. And the decider will go down on Gresfin if we get there. Royal Blood map three, of course, for Solar. That was a very confusing way for me to word that for anyone who's trying to track it. But don't worry, you guys will see it. And the Reaper's bouncing on around, trying to pick off these units. But Sol is pretty good at avoiding the tax. It's a big map. And you know what? Happy to just push that back. Drop a creep tumor down. Third base on the triangle location. Reaper's gonna dive! The Zerglings were a little bit far back. He might have got it. Always good to try. Third command center tucked in the back a little bit. Hard to scout that one without losing an Overlord. And right now the Overlord having a bit of a perv out front of the base on that pillar. Uh, 3cc opening, of course, a very solid macro opening. And I really, I wonder, what's the follow-up? Marauder held that. Do we see something highly aggressive? Do we see two port battle cruiser? Rainer always goes overlord speed on this map because Terrans do so many cheeky openings here. Does Oliveira just play straight up bio mine and multi prong? I think the bases are so spread out. If you're confident playing a mechanical war with the Zerg, that's an okay way to play. But Solar, I'll tell you guys, there's one way he plays Zerg versus Terran turtling, defending, surviving. He often looks like he's losing and losing and losing, but he just survives. He weathers all the punches. He rocky balboas it. And he uh, basically blocks all of his opponent's punches with his face. And when he's a bruised and bloodied mess and you go, come on, man, surely he's lost this game. You realize he's on 90 drones. He has a hive and five bases. And he just runs across the map with lurkers and wins. And you're like, oh, wait, was was this all according to plant? Solar regularly wins games where he looked like a punching bag for the first 10 minutes of the Zerg vs. Terran. So Oliveira, the, the real trick here is how do you finish Solar off? And how do you not get over eager and kind of impale yourself on his defenses? Because Solar is a master of shutting down aggression. Whenever he plays Maru and Maru gets tricky with his openings, Solar takes big leads by shutting down that aggression. I would say your best bet is actually playing a little bit greedier and more defensive versus Solar with more calculated aggression rather than over committing. But that's the third gas, guys. And we're going to see Mech. This is Battle Mech. Italian Banshee into Battle Mech, guys. Oh me, oh my. The Marines are going to deny this. No tech lab on the barracks. Might be a tell at 4 minutes 30. Oh, he lifts the factory to sell the story. Oliver is like, oh yes, I'm about to build two more uh, barracks here. Did Solar see it though? Solar may have seen that, that factory lift back off there. He may have lifted it too early. For those who don't know, there is a thing called death vision. And that is, when something dies, you get vision there for an extra one and a half, two seconds, so that you can look where a unit dies, see what it saw before it went down. And I think, I think Oliveira just gave away what he was doing, because there's a Roach Warren on the way. Solar wants to play Roaches, which is exactly what you do if you knew you're up against mech play. So I think he has the read. And I think Oliveira here playing three commands and a mech is, is going to be in a bit of a, a hard spot to surprise a Solar who's sending more Link Scouts out. He's making Overlord speed to confirm. 
Now, it doesn't mean you're necessarily too far behind, of course. It's definitely just something to keep an eye out for. More and more Hellions are on the way. 50 workers versus 49 SCVs. And you can see these extra gases going down for Solar as well. He's got fantastic creep spread. 8 Queens, 17 Zerglings. He's adding some Roaches now to help defend these Hellions. Hellions not really making any real inroads into the Zerg territory just yet. Starts fighting those Queens, but uh, not going to get too much done. Gets rid of a single tumor and then rotates. And that, of course, immediately gets replaced. Two more factories are on the way. A dropper lord making. Oh, he's going to try and kill him. For those who don't know, when he's playing against Mech, Solar's favorite thing is the German taxi. It's usually a Zerg versus Protoss build because they rely on oracles to defend. But with this build, your Banshees, you're relying on to defend. And if he can get those queens on him with an Overseer, he's going to wreck you. Overseer following six queens. Mass Roach coming across. He sees it. Oliveira needs to try to lock on with Cyclones to take down those uh, Overlords or to get some Siege Tanks up. He doesn't have either just yet, and I, I really don't know what you can do against this push. If Solar gets a read on you going mech, he does this all the time and just slays Gumio. It's why Gumio almost never plays mech versus him anymore. Masslings around! So many Zerglings! Solar doing a brutal Ravager lane queen all in. The Hellion run by gets caught, and Solar playing his opening map pick to perfection. The Queens are going to arrive, which will put an end to the Banshees being able to deal with this. Unless the Overseer gets picked off, that might be a best bet as Oliveira. He's actually locked onto the Widow Mines. The Banshees, one of them, is going to fall. The Widow Mines get some decent hits on the Overseer. If he can pick off the Overseer, the Banshees can do it. No, he doesn't, he doesn't lock onto it, though. And there's just too many units. I don't think he could do it. That tank's there. The Ravagers are going to buy all that tank down instantly. It sieges, and it gets one shot off before going down. This is such a deadly all-in, and I'm telling you... If he can figure out when you're going mech, if you're predictable at all, Solar is such an expert at making it look like a bad, vulnerable build. He does this so often, and, and a build which looks solid against so many Zerg strategies. If he sniffs out what you're doing, man, Solar, uh, gotta taking advantage. Oliveira's trying to hold on and stave off the advance, but this map is just so bad for a standard Terran strategy, and as a result, it becomes a little bit predictable that the Terran player likes to do a tricky mech build. GG, well played, Solar takes a convincing map one. All right, all right, all right. Well, that was a rough game one, but it was the map where you're bringing out the special tactics, got counted, got scouted, and Oliveira drops that map. But Solar in the top left looking very confident to start the series. A slayer of mech he is. And uh, we had a quick moment for an interview with uh, Oliveira, by the way. And it was just very quick in between games. I said, Oliveira, uh, our, our, our on-court uh, on reporter, uh, on Battlefield Reporter, I guess we should say for Starcraft, went and said, hey, you know, what are your thoughts on Zerg? Zerg Imba. Okay, that's it. <laughs> that was a very simple response from Oliveira, but okay, good to good to see. Just Zerg Imba. All right, I'm down with it. Uh, interesting to see that we've got some, uh, some uh, on-the-field reporting. Shout out to Barbara, who's down there on the battlefield. Uh, on this map, she's going to be uh, cloaking herself as an Urubu and uh, hopefully getting some more information from down there on the battlefield and, and giving you guys some closer to the action reports on what the players are feeling and uh, what it's like in amongst the, the bullets, the gunfire, the claws, and the creep spread. Gas does come down here for Solar. He's going to be going hatch gas pool there. Sporting pool's on the way as well. No scout for Oliveira. I don't think it makes sense. Solar's predictable as well. So... Um, funnily enough, Sol is very good at randomizing his overlord patterns to hunt for proxy barracks. You can see he's checked everywhere on the south side for proxy barracks. You'd need to do it all the way back here. Here. Oh, you could have done it in the middle, funnily enough, but that's such a dangerous spot. Or up here. But Oliver is not one who likes to gamble too often on proxy barracks. You know, Kua, Bian, uh, even Maru, they all mix it in a lot more often. I feel like Olivera it's a little bit more stable, solid, kind of like Clem sometimes in that he likes to, you know, play the straight up TVZ a little bit more. Let's <laughs> spam this molar to support Solar. <laughs> I didn't even know there was a tooth emoji. That's hilarious. Oh, Twitch chat is very funny. <laughs> That's probably the dumbest copy pasta I've seen in a while. That is, that is very funny. We've obviously got spam this aloe vera to help Olivera. Which is great, but uh, oh, look at that! He's gonna get a block. Can he get the drone? Oh, slick moves, guys! He blocks the base and gets the drone, and that's very annoying for Solar. Great start. He's also built six lings, which is a very, uh, you know, a bit expensive. 
I've been joking about my debate. I've had an ongoing debate with Solar about four or six Zerglings in ZVZ for a long time. I fall on the European foreign side of the debate where we say, no, 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 never worth it. He's a big fan of always Sixlings to be safe. Oh, this base is so delayed now. Solar is building an Overlord, a third Queen, Link Speed. He's getting those things pretty quickly. But Oliver is just getting value out of a Reaper, which otherwise wouldn't be doing anything. You can't ever snipe the creep on this map. Forces Solar to take a third base that he clearly was not that keen to take. He wanted to take the other one. And behind it, third command center once again. But I guarantee you this time it's going to be bio play, which is Olivera's forte. Reaper gets in the main. Not really getting any real damage, but, you know, just damaging drones being annoying. Wow, he's, he's doing his best North American impression. For those who don't know, no one micros a Reaper harder than a low GM on the North American ladder. They'll float 800 minerals to try to get that drone kill. Oliveira, of course, does it with perfect macro behind it, almost like he's a world champion. Can you believe it? Stim's on the way. Ooh, okay, nice quick stim. So it looks like the starport will be getting delayed for Oliveira. He's gonna be going second barracks on that reactor in a moment. So look at this, this SCV, factory lifts, builds the second barracks. It's a two on one, guys. Oh, he didn't build it on the reactor, that's interesting. Oh, he's doing the three barracks build, I believe. What? Dot. What? Oh, yeah, I just did use it. Oh, okay, Dot just came in, pointed at my soundboard awkwardly and said, remember to use it. <laughs> okay. Oh, we will. Um, Overlord comes into scout. Oliveira, what do you have to say about that? Nice try. <laughs> mate, he just scouted your whole production. He saw the third command center. Don't get cocky, mate. Don't get cocky. <laughs> Easy there, Oliveira. Uh, good to see Barbara asking the players questions, though, and them answering on the fly. For those who don't know, Oliveira jerry-rigged his phone to be his webcam for us so that he could get around the VPNs needed to play with a firewall to get through uh, beyond the firewall while also not affecting his ping. Double engineering bay coming down real quick. Oh, this is just straight into big macro play. I love this build, guys. Really greedy. I've seen Maru annihilate Solar with this build because Solar's so safe and standard. And if you just build no safety tanks, go straight up to, th you know, three barracks, bio, mine, multi-prong, you could do really well. Oh, sorry, guys. Don't want to block the action. Oh, he saves the Hellion. Gets two creep tumors. Really nice micro by Oliveira. Oliveira and his element, anyone who was worried the world champion be getting knocked out and, and fall apart after that first game, I wholeheartedly believe Oliveira went into that game with a rock-solid mindset, guys. And uh, he, he really did, does just kind of go, you know what? Not my best map. Throw out a crazy strat, see what sticks. And uh, he's very happy now to be on Babylon, a map with ledges, rocks, which have not been taken down there or there. That's a big mistake for Solar, in my opinion, guys. The rocks on this map, the earlier you take them down, the better. He's got 14 Zerglings, and I do think he should take them out. Double Evo, Baneling Nest are here. Baneling Nest hasn't, uh, I was going to say Baneling Speed hasn't started yet, but there we go. 62 workers versus 50 SCVs. And the Medivacs are on the way. The Bio's pumping on out, but he has unfortunately forgotten his armor upgrade. So a bit of a mistake there for Oliveira. Luckily, attack is the more important of the two upgrades. But if he started that, doesn't check till he's time to start 2-2, then it would be a bummer. As it is, he's about a minute behind on plus one armor, but he does notice then, starts it up. That's a ton of Marines, man. Already Banelings morphing for Solar. And he's going for the third base on the bottom, fourth base on the top. Looks like Oliveira's going to push the top. Hellions intercept these Zerglings. Solar looks for a little flank on that, unable to get it. Hydrogen goes down immediately behind this. Very well done here by him. Double drops on that north. Does the creep spot it? I think it will in a moment, but Marines all ready to stim in for that clearance on the creep. Here we go. Oh, a couple of creep tumors and an overlord. Can he focus down some banes? Careful. A little slow on the pickup, but that's okay. Getting hit by a baneling and losing only a single Marine is all fine. Zergling run by comes in. Hellions shut it down and a second factory goes down on the front. The Widow Mines are now producing. The Parade is coming forwards across this map. Five Barracks production's up. The Queens are taking damage. Where Solar's Ling Bane right now? He's going to lose a couple of drones. One drone goes down. The Queen's taking damage. Oh, Oliveira with a misclick. But he saves most of the Marines. He goes straight in the main. His Marines are all deep in the red. So he's got to be very careful with those. But he feels the momentum right now. And he's diving on top of the Queens. The Queens are getting slaughtered by the Reinforce. Solar going to anticipate this. Does deal with the Marines in the main. Forces the pickup. But oh my god, look at the spready on the low ground. Oh, he's focused firing the Banelings. Oliveira back in his element. He says, give me, get rid of that mech. Give me this bio, let's go. And this is a very powerful strategy. 
Solar is hanging on though. He's still got three bases, but the Banelings aren't quite finished morphing. It's a giant spready. The mines are there. Three base first, three base, and a fourth command set is on the way behind it. This is not an all-in push or anything like that, but fighting while well, he has 1-1 upgrades and Solar does not. 1-1 upgrades are going to kick in for Solar only after he's been slaughtered. And after obviously an upsetting game one that was rather one-sided, I think it is indeed turn for us to ask Solar's thoughts. Barb gets in there with the Urubu. Solar, right now on the back foot. These Marines just won't leave. Heron Imba. Oh, okay. Very, very, very powerful words from Solar. The players aren't being that that creative right now. They're basically just smack talking each other's race. It's the innovation class of basically saying, your race is more powerful than mine. But we'll see, man. These Marines just running circles around him. We haven't seen any big Widow Mine hits just yet. It's almost pure Marine Widow Mine. But with Drilling Claws, 4th Command Center, 2-2 two, two upgrades starting up at similar times, and no creep on this north side. Solar has no Vat Vision. Oliveira, knowing when and where to strike, he's going to shove in on the north side. Oh, the Bailings! Watch out! The Widow Mines aren't going to fire. Great play there by Solar. But he's got, what, a few Hydras? With, like, mo movement speed and nothing else? He's got a few Queens, a few Hydras, a few Bailings. Widow Mine drop on the left side gets six workers. There is Bailings, though. Ooh, Bailings get in. Nine SCVs go down on the other side. The Marines shove it on the top, though. And Solar has to tap out. Oh, my lord. Oliveira fights back, and Solar is not happy. This game is stupid. All tied up one-to-one -one as we go into probably, I would say, the most even map out of the, the bunch that they've picked. I think all the remaining maps are pretty good. They get more and more close to even as you go on, but I think this one's pretty decent. The Solar's picked it, though, so clearly confident here in the bottom left of Royal Blood. Onside Gaming Solar. His opponent in the top right side, Oliveira, representing Kaizy Gaming. And uh, the reigning world champion really showing what he's got in that last game. I remember uh, recently there was a series right before Katowice where Solar actually beat Maru 4-3. And he dominated three games against Maru's kind of weird, crazy, aggressive openings. Just kept getting ahead and winning. And then Maru played a similar build to Oliveira in that last game. Just very greedy three command center, straight to double upgrades, bio, mine, non-stop aggression in Solar's face with n like no defensive investment. No bunkers at home, no tanks on the high ground. No banshees, none of that stuff. It was just shove, shove, shove. Um, and, and Solar just buckled and lost three games in a row after being up 3-0. And then in game seven, Solar was like, okay, I'm just going to do a 1-1 road troll and he just killed Maru. <laughs> so he won 4-3. But I think it exposed a weakness of the fact that Solar is like, he kind of plays like Serral used to, where it's like, I will just defend and survive and absorb whatever you throw at me. And that's all well and good, but it can lead to some issues. It, it can lead to a few issues. And, and one of the main ones that you're going to run into as a player is, well, the opponent suddenly, if you're never doing any big crazy attacks, doesn't have to worry about much. And I'd say Solar in a best of five, one game, will usually do either a Roach all in or a bit of a Ling Flood or something like that. Sometimes it's not even once in a best of five. Sometimes it's one game in every two or three best of fives. So we'll see how that goes. Uh, drones moving down to the natural. Zerglings on the way as well, guys. Got SCVs, command centers there coming up as well. Reaper's going to come across the map. And remember, that one started really well that last game. I don't think Solar's going to leave anything down to chance this time. Should be starting an Overlord before the hatchery still. Overlord starts and the hatchery. Yeah, he starts at the second it's on 300 minerals. He's like, no, no, no. We're not going to do that again, man. We are not going to do that again. All right, Reaper comes in. Keeps hitting those drones, seeing what he can... Oh, oh, oh. Okay, the Zerglings, though. Sol is not too happy about this Reaper, man. Like I said, he's really microing his heart out with that Reaper just being extra annoying. He doesn't leave. He just goes to the natural. Sol is queen. Hey, leave me alone. Apparently uh, not too happy that that Reaper wants to just hang out and pretend this base is also his base. That's like when your friend takes off their... Sh uh, doesn't even take their shoes off, walks in, puts their feet up on the coffee table. Just a bit disrespectful. Oh, did he get the creep tumor? No, not quite. He gets out of there. He does get out of there. Okay, good pullback. Good micro, but good defense by Solar. Doesn't take any damage. And behind it, 3cc. Factory's down. Aliens are on the way. Wouldn't it be crazy if Oliveira just does the exact same build? Let's see. We'll find out. Normally, you'd go Starport before Tech Lab unless you were doing the same build. I think he's doing the same build, guys. Queen pushes out, gets a few hit on the Reaper. That's going to try and guard this creep tumor. He's coming in from that right side. I'm not quite able to get it just yet. He sees this queen's high on energy. So by hanging around, he's going to force her to delay putting the tumor down. 
Oliveira being very annoying. Sola! It's just like, come on, man. Sola right now, one worker mining on gas. Hasn't put back on yet. Very mineral focused. He wants to fill this mineral line up as quickly as possible. This is a classic rule of one gas. But it's the modern version where the players don't even put back on that first gas until after the four minute mark. A few Hellions and Reapers thinking about diving in, but the Queens are up front and getting some damage on the Hellion. Very important. Creep spread going to be moving out there. Now, uh, I actually believe this map is pretty even between the races. Apparently, Rainer believes this map is actually Terran favored, and yet Solar has picked it here, guys. So we're about to see... Does, uh, does the Rainer school of thought, it's actually bad for Zergood for Terran apply, or is Solar correct in picking this map over, uh, of course, Dragon Scales and then Gressfin? We'll find out. Overlord at the front, gonna come in. Barracks are right in vision. Nothing being hidden here at all. I mean, the Overlord will go down, but Solar sees everything that's happening there. And uh, it's gonna be very nice to have all that vision. Lings are there. They're going to move out the left side as well. Hellions as well. Double Engineering Bay is finishing in the back of the base. Hellions and Reapers are over there as well. Lings going to start breaking those rocks. All right. And really not being able to slow the creep down massively. On the other hand, the early tumors haven't spread that far, right? Solus had to be pretty conservative with it. And notice he's saving a lot of energy on these queens in case there's like... I guess that's in case there's a Hellbat timing, but he scouted the extra barracks. He knows the factory swapped off, so he should be putting a lot more tumors down on the front. You don't need a lot of uh, transfuse in this scenario, at least. I don't think so. Maybe Solar's already thinking one or two minutes ahead when those Marines come across the map. For now, double Evo Chamber upgrades are on the way. Just a little behind the 1-1 one, one for Terran. Not too far behind. Remember that last game? Most of that fighting was 0-0 zero, zero versus 1-1. One, one. There we go, guys. Third command center. Going to go down. Gonna try and rally some SCVs out to the third base. Fourth base goes down in the bottom right side for Solar. The Hellion Reaper not finding much, but they don't need to with this build. It's all about when those Marines come across the map. If Solar can get this creep out a little bit further. I think he's feeling pretty decent just on that defensive setup. The Banley Nest in the lair is massively delayed. So the big weakness of this version of the build is because he went much quicker Evo Chambers. He's gonna have way better upgrades, but his Baneling speed will be very delayed. However, great work account, great production. I feel like Solus had the better end of the opening so far and uh, has adapted to Oliveira, maybe being a little bit too predictable by playing the same strategy twice in a row. Two medevacs and 16 marines move out to that left side, clears the pillar, making sure there's no overlords. Notice he's making sure there's no overlords watching, really ensuring Solar doesn't have vision. And we can see Solar's only got vision on creep. He doesn't even have vision out here on the far left of the map or down in the bottom right with overlords. So he could get surprised by drops, but man, that's pretty far out, that creep. Finally, the Marines are coming in. They're going to try and push that creep away. He's going to rotate around that left side. Have to do another scan in a moment. Uh, he does have a few scans saved up, so very good planning by Oliveira, making sure he's got those. And he gets most of the creep tuners. Oh, good positioning. Gets... Uh, only gets two Banelings and loses two or three Marines, so not perfect micro by him. Good defense by Solar so far. Hydroden is on the way as well. The fourth base has nine drones. Taking a fifth base up front as well as Solar. Rally of Bio Mine Hellion down the right side. Oliveira is going to try and pick him apart, but this time Solar has the equal upgrades. It's 1 1 versus 1 1. Baneling speed, however, is still a little while away, but the Mass Queen Ling defends the left side. Those Marines still hanging out. These guys pushing up. The Widow Mine Hellion Marine is there. These are slow Banelings. I don't think you want to defend that fifth base. Solar goes in with just a few Lings and Banes, but a quick unburrow from Oliveira to stop them firing. Oh, 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 okay, he saves some of the units, but the Hellbats take up a lot of space. A lot of those units do go down, but he sneaks by on the left side. One of the medevacs gets shot down. He only gets eight Marines in that mineral line. Solar is slapping him down left, right, and center. Oliveira is not done yet, but this is really looking like he's getting the worst end of these trades. That Spore Crawler must have taken down a medevac when we weren't looking. 2-2 two, two upgrades start up for both sides, saving most of those units. Only one Hellbat goes down. Units lost tab, of course, is better for Oliveira in the trading. But you're meant to have it a lot better. Right now, Solar is in the lead. But the Marines clean up an Overlord on the left side. This creep is still being denied a little bit. Oliver is trying to make sure he stays on top of this creep spread. That's going to limit Solar's ability to get out there on the map. Going up to eight barracks behind the fourth command center finishing. Widow Mines are still producing behind this. Unfortunately for Oliver, this creep just beyond his scans. It's an annoying position to be in as a Terran. That creep is always just beyond view. We'll see if Oliveira catches that spread. Looks like he does. And he's like, hey, wait, what the hell? Still an active tumor there. Infestation pits on the way. 2-2 upgrades to both sides. Still army supply. Very even for both sides. 
is always scary for the Zerg player, but he's got a good Baneling count. Oh, nice cancel on the fifth base. Watch out for the Widow Mines. Oh, big boomies. 17 kills on that Widow Mine. Very nice shots for Oliveira. He's going to push the left side at the same time. Oh, Oliveira is getting in his element now. Solar may have the supply lead, but let's see how long that lasts. These Widow Mines could be big. Good hot pickup on the Marine. And another big, big shot. That there was beautiful. Very, very nice Widow Mine hit starting to get out for Oliveira. He's also pushed the creep totally off the left side. There's not that much creep on the right either. He's going to keep split pushing and the fourth base is up behind it. Check it out. The eight barracks are now up with their three extra tech labs. Concussive's on the way. And that second factory is pumping tanks in the main. So he's mixing siege tanks in to help deal with the hydras. Doesn't want to be on pure bio mine. Oh, another cancel on the fifth base. Well done for Oliveira. Dives in the left side as well. Goes after the queens, but uh oh, that's dangerous. Get out of there. Get out of there, Oliveira. Picks up, saves most of those marines. Loses a medevac, but one with only one marine left inside. Siege tank, Widow Mine Bio is being produced. I think this is one of the best army comps out there for Terran. Few tanks to help deal with the Hydras and kind of really abuse good positions from the high ground, but still plenty of Widow Mines to deal with the Mass Link Bane. Unfortunately for him, Solar may have been taking some punches in this game, but Solar is made to take punches. He's at 86 workers right now. He's got a Hive almost finished and a Lurker Den almost finished. And that's a scary point for a Terran that really needs to do a bit more damage. Triple drop down the left side. That's one way of opening things up. Oliveira is going to move forward with a few tanks, a bit of a bio mine spread. He sees the army pull back for the drop, and he's going to stim it on the front. Solar with a good army split, though. The Banelings come forward. The Marines doing pretty well. Oliveira trying to do very good there. Picks up in the main, and those medevacs do get out of there for now. The Vipers don't yet have parasitic bomb energy or anything like that. They've only just started building the bio push on two sides. He's trying to bait Solar in a big mistake. Solar staying calm and steady, though, and these Marines are heavily overstimmed. Watch out for the Widow Mines and the tanks. Solar chases. The Widow Mines not finding the big boomies just yet. The Widow Mine's not finding any good hits. Solar actually going to run over this push and a perfect break because Oliveira was about to regroup those Marines on the left side with this army. He's going to go down and see if he can take a little bit of a, a fight. But he says, nope. Oh, God, I got to get out of here. Oliveira has been held back and now he's got to build tanks, build more command centers. He's got to go to late game. But he's behind on the late game, I would say, because Solar is almost always, if he can just do one big lurker wave, like he'll, he'll overwhelm. On the other hand... I'm talking very fast right now. I'm getting very excited. But on the other hand, uh, there's no gas. Solar loses his fifth base again. His income won't be great. He's never really mined much. He's just really started fully mining this base. Still a big army there. The Marines are still doing very good. 3-3 three, three is doing good. I, I thought we'd see a big round of Lurkers, but he's actually had to use so many Banelings to defend. He's not that far ahead on the tech by any means. Tanks get jumped on though. Great ambush. And that's that's huge. That's huge because the Vipers can abduct as well. Abduct! He goes for the parasitic bomb. I keep seeing this move lately, guys. He could have abducted those full medevacs into those hydras and shot them down. Uh, I don't think it matters, though. Solar all over this game. He is looking fantastic. There's not enough units on the rally now. That ambush was so good. Oh, good Widow Mine hit. Save the day. The SCVs get out of there. Marine stab it on the left side. Oliveira making the most of what looked like a disaster. I think he's still going to lose that command center there. Oh, God. Lings are in that mineral line. That's not good for him. Marines running on the right side. And it looks like they ran into some Banelings. So much happening in so many places and solar is definitely coming out on top oh my lord it looked like Oliveira was was doing well but man that command center is going down and i think right now oh the command center burns this drop gets pushed back Oliveira is desperately multitasking because the parasitic bombs take those drops down i know solar's thinking just one thing thanks for dessert kippo ah uh, that's right mate because it's it's uh because the the hydra's it move ever so slightly faster off creep guys that's that's what made the difference here totally definitely not his skill uh anyways uh feeding into twitch chat memes and reddit complaints aside uh hydraling bane way out on supply up 30 army supply and he's going to be shoving forwards breaking these rocks down opening the map up i don't know how Oliveira gets a fifth base uh, i don't think he does he's in survival mode he needs Solar to chuck a Zerg right now. Chucking a Zerg is when you take an awful fight, when all you need to do is not take an awful fight to win this game. Oliver is well set up on the D. That left side base looking very exposed. Solar realizes he's going to rotate around there. Oliver is really well set up on the right. But, uh-oh. Uh-oh. His left side's wide open. The sensor tower isn't going to be enough to hold back Solar. He's, he's distracted him on that right side. These SCVs need to get out of here. He's trying to come down. The bio mine trying to defend the Banelings. Squeezing their way through that choke point. Who cares about the aesthetics? Let's just shove those Banelings through a choke point. But oh my god. It's actually a pretty good fight for Oliveira. On the right side though. Lings do kill a bunch of SCVs and a siege tank. I don't think that was a good fight for Solar. I, I gotta say. 
But when you're this far ahead, you're on 83 workers. It might have been good enough. He's got 3-3 upgrades of his own about to kick in. He's been on 2-2 versus 3-3. That was very good handling by Oliveira, who's floating a fifth base out. He's going to counter push. If he can get something in there, he could do well. Ling Bane on the right side, getting ready for a backstab. Solar's going to roll into the third base, and that could be game ending. If he wipes out a bunch of workers there, which he absolutely will, that's going to be huge. Ling Bane, Hydra rolling in on the front as well. Takes out a few tanks, but then he pulls back. Doesn't have the numbers for the completion. Ling's in the mineral line are going to get about 10, maybe 12 more SCVs on the front. Another wave of Banelings comes in. The tanks, the Marauders, the Bio trying to gun them down. Solar with some good in and out. Micro, the Ghost and the Bio doing what they can. Looks like 15 SCVs ended up dying on that right side, guys. Shout out to Adrenal Glands. Who cares if you got plus three melee or not? You get that 40% attack speed, and those Zerglings know how to chomp, man. Oh, picking up in the red hit point. Medivac always very dangerous. Solar's going to counter push across the map. Now, it would be... Uh-oh. Yeah, he's going to keep attacking. I mean... You're in such a bad spot. You need to catch Solar out of position. Oliveira needs to keep attacking. I understand why he's doing this. I just don't know if there's a path to victory when you're this far behind on supply. These Ling Run buys are causing a ruckus. He does save most of his army on the right side. He gets a hatchery counter on the left, but there are already Ling scrambling here. His siege tanks and bio getting cleaned up. Those adrenal zerglings causing a nightmare. The Widow Mines getting decent hits. He needs better than decent though, guys. He needs the big boom booms. He needs those big juicies right all over Solar's army to win this game. The Lurkers defend the right side. He could try to drop around that and drop in the mineral line. But I mean, Oliveira needs blitzing fast tactical thinking and to somehow get a little minute of rest on his economy. Solar says a minute of rest is what you'll get when you're dead, mate. You can rest all you want at that time. Right now, he is marauding over the top, punching forwards. And it really feels like Oliveira, he's doing great splits. He's microing really well. But Solar is a powerful, powerful Zerg play, and he wins an incredibly important map there on Royal Blood. All right, all right, all right, guys. Let's go in the top left side, representing Onside Gaming. This is Solar. He's up two to one, but it's back on the Terrans map. And down here in the bottom right side, it looks like... He, is he going to go Command Center first? For a second, I thought he was, but I don't think so. It's Oliveira. I think he likes getting that reaper across the map oh spawning pool first interesting guys i think solar is expecting to be playing against the proxy barracks i think that's what that's about because he hasn't taken a gas yet he could go hatchery and then gas and do a classic five roach pressure it's not the worst thing on this map you can there's multiple lanes so you can kind of sneak your roaches across the map and there hasn't really been any scv scouting you can also just do the classic ling run by because remember if you build six lings, Oliveira has sent his Reaper straight across the map. No SCV scout every game. He's going to have to defend with one Marine and just some SCV micro. Very easy to fumble that and lose a lot of units. But we don't see a lot of lava saved up here. Yes, we do, actually. Never mind. He's only only 16 supply. This is a lot of lava saved up. That's six Zerglings. Oh, he's forgotten to build the last one. Solar. He's only built four. I'm sure he was meant to build six there. But no, he's just going for... Okay. All right. Color me. Color me surprised. And actually, there's an SCV scout for Oliveira. Perfect in this scenario, guys. Absolutely perfect that he is going for the SCV scout. That'll tell him to keep his Reaper at home, and he will be very safe. As long as he doesn't chuck a Clem and try to chase the SCVs down with the SCV and the Reaper, which I know Clem likes to, like, follow the Lings with the SCV, and they turn and attack it, and he runs away, and then he goes back to chasing them, trying to spy where they are. I think he just has to leave the Reaper at home. The Overlord will see he's there. So it's a bit of a standoff. The Lings just hide, and the Reaper just stays at home. It's not too bad for Solar. He's only now starting to mine gas, and he's doing it real slowly as well. Just one worker on gas right now. So he's pl he's not planning to go quick Ling speed by any means. It's all about getting these three Queens up, injecting. No doubt moving out to a third base. Only one gas up right now for Oliveira. Tells us that third command center that he's been loving so much. Almost certain to happen again. Oh, the Ling's sneaking by. Oliveira a little too far out with the Reaper, guys. And that's actually going to let that in. Oliveira with a mistake. Uh-oh. Marine is up there. The CV goes back to building it. Reaper can hunt down the Lings now. Is it worth throwing away three Zerglings to delay the command center a little bit? I don't know. I think it's okay. I don't think it's the end of the world. It's three Lings, right? 75 minerals. But I don't know if he got 75 minerals worth of value out of it. Did he scout the third command center? He did. Well, he scouted the third command center. So yeah, okay. Yeah, it's definitely worth it. He got the scout. 
sees the third command center. I think it's worth it just for that because now his overlord can just sit on the pillar. And if no Viking gets built, that's all good. This time there is a second gas in a starport. So going back to starport units, Oliveira doesn't want to be too predictable, guys. He doesn't want to just be like, oh, I'm just going three barracks, double engineering bay, biomine. Can't do that every game. As I talked about, that's what Maru did to start turning that series around versus Solar. And then Solar said, well, I'll kill you with 1-1 one, one Roach if you're being so greedy over and over again. Reaper's going to move up that left side. Hellions are producing behind it. And the starport will land on the tech lab. Looks like we will see a Banshee coming in. Reaper pokes up into the main and then runs away. Three queens are out, two more building, and Link Speed will be finishing shortly with six more Zerglings on the way. Overlord's going to sacrifice, and he sees the factory still on the reactor, and seeing the starport is going to confirm. Solar will say, okay, let's not do the double Evo chamber. He'll play a quick lair this game, because you see he sees the bubbles on the starport as well, which means there's an upgrade there. Even if that's being faked, he'll go quick lair here for Overseer, so he has mobile detection. And, uh, and then he's going to go for Spore Crawlers as well, potentially to help defend these bases. Oh my god, the drones are in the open. The creep wasn't out there, guys. Solar making a little bit of a doo-doo. And three drones for free. Takes no damage on those Hellions. The Reaper will regenerate. And of course, the standard barracks transition coming up behind it. Very nice opening for Oliveira so far. Lair does start for Solar. Expect the extra gases. And oh, he's going to play Roach. He's going to play Roach. Okay, now now this is something crazy, guys. Recently, Solar has been playing Roach, Hydra, Lurker, Infester. Sometimes even with a few Infestors, like the Dark style, right? It's not his specialty. The one time I saw him do it, he got rolled by, I think it was Beyond. Um, he just got killed by a big three base push. But uh, yeah, really surprising that he's chosen to play Roaches. He might think it's Mech. Because this is the same thing he did on Altitude. He might think it's mech. Oh, interesting. Overlord speed. He's got seven queens out. I mean, only seven queens. Normally, he'd go like nine queens, I think, if he was doing that. He's building roaches now off just 48 drones. Is he going to try? I mean, can that kill a Hellion Banshee? Into He's doing it. Guys, the German taxi. He's upgrading the German taxi right now. Solar is going to try the same all-in from game one, which was so good versus mech. But in this build, Stim Marines will be out. If Oliveira keeps building Marines, he should be fine. But right now, he's not building Marines. He's not building a tank. Tank starts up. Tank starts up, guys. The Banshee see the roaches coming. He sees uh, all of this. He's getting three drones. Solar going for an all-in here. And I dare say, not the right one. Solar got a complete misread on this game. I think Oliveira is looking very, very powerful in this situation. Here comes the taxi, the roach rally. The Hellions are being careful. They want to just not get surrounded, I would argue here. There's a big Ling rally behind this. They're going to kill at least a good number of these Zerglings. And he's going to have to lift his third. The Banshees get seven drones before having to pull back. The Hellions are still alive? Oh my god, they're going to get a few more drones as well. Great damage here. Third command center is never really in danger. There's two bunkers defending the natural and a siege tank. Solar is going to feel his heart sink right now. I mean, Oliver is like, uh, you sure you want to attack it here? Are you sure? Are you sure about that? <laughs> I mean, he could pick off some depots, but Sol is still building Zerglings. He's going all in because he's already down at such a low work account. Surely, surely. He's like, how did you know? How are you? I thought you were doing mech, man. I thought you were doing mech, but look at that. Two bunkers and a tank. This is absolutely devastating. Olivera backhanding this push. Nice cry. And he says, nice try. Solar cannot be happy about that. Solar, what do you have to say in return? I think it's Mepek. Oh, come on. I don't think so. He was planning to play Bio the whole time. You just misread the scouting, mate. All right. Well, looks like he had a misread in that last game. That fell absolutely flat. Solar, now in the bottom right side of the map on Gressvin. And this is a map where Oliveira, dude, he made a crazy late game def defense versus Rainer, defending about a thousand waves of Ling Bane, Hydra, Ultra, constant Ling drop sieging his main base. The world champion, Kaizy Gaming's Oliveira, in the top left. He, he, he looked like Maru in that game four versus Rainer. A lot of people talk about game five and game three and all this stuff. I think game four was like where Oliveira showed to me that he could play patient like Maru, defensive late game. I don't think he'll try to play that. I think it's just like, he'll still play looking for advantages at every stage. And if it gets to the late game, he'll play it out. Excuse me. He was close to getting there on Royal Blood. I do think if that push when he was rotating those tanks and Widow Mines to the right side of the map didn't get ambushed by Solar, 
we would have got to see a, a longer game. But when Solo got that ambush, he kind of just got out of control. He got a bit too much economic damage off it at a point where Terran wasn't fully set up. And it went from there. Now Reaper is on the way. Solar says, this is why I don't pull first. And I just play the same opening 99% of the time, Pig. You can say I'm predictable, but I don't. <laughs> I mean, this is how I win games. And I'm like, I'm with you, Solar man. I am absolutely with you, dude. Personally, for my own selfish reasons, uh, hoping we get to see that late game with some nukey nukes. Just for the drama. Solar having a bit of uh, a history with nukes. Scarlet had a famous nuke where she was playing in GSL and didn't know the Korean sound line for nuclear la nuclear launch detected. But uh, Souls had a few of those playing in without an excuse like that. In big, big tournaments, playing from the comfort of his own home. Reaper's coming in. The Zergling's not too happy about it, but they're microing very well. Oh, careful, careful. He's got to pull back. And the wings do pull back as well. Oh, Looks like Solar was drinking water. Yeah, Solar is actually a guzzler, guys. He guzzles a lot of water at the start of the game. Now, notice the Reaper tried to click on the Queen there. Uh, the, the Creep Tumor, but he clicked on the Queen twice with the Reaper. Now, you might think, well, Oliveira, what a baddie. The thing is, it's really hard when the Queen is directly below the Creep Tumor to click on the Creep Tumor. Unless you scroll till the Queen's at the bottom of your screen, then you can click on the Tumor above it. But even then, it's very difficult because notice the Queen has this big tentacle on top that actually sticks out. So you can click like above her and it'll still select her anywhere on that arm. So even there, clicking to the top left of the circle around her base will select her. Funny little details when it comes to how these units actually get clicked on. And it's why in certain positions, you can actually kind of block the creep tumor from getting clicked on just by hugging it with the creep with the queen. Um, kind of funny little thing. And then where you position your screen can kind of change that a little bit. Overlord's going to come in. The Marine is like, get out of here, man. It's like, I don't, I, I don't, oi, oi. Hey, leave me alone. But much like uh, any determined pervert, the Overlord will not be perturbed. He wants that starport, Scout. Can he see? Can he see it? He sees it. He sees the starport. There is a Viking on the way. Barracks building a tech lab. Hellion's coming on the front. Looks like just one Zergling, one Overlord going down. And he does see what's going on. The Marines at least kill him. It's not free vision, but Solar knows he's not up against that bio mine parade. And he took the third at the front. Now, this is a very exposed base. But it's going to allow him to get a head start on his creep, which is so important on this map. Because you always have to take this base by your third or your fourth. And this way you get an easier fourth either there, or a lot of Zergs like to take it there and then get an easy fifth base in the back even. Oh, armory and a factory. Oh, oh my god, guys. Oliveira is playing two factory blue flame into bio. Oh, Solar going for the scout. Oh, that would be huge if he scouted this. This is going to be a giant blue flame hellion attack where he's going to have medevacs with it as well. So he's going to drop some of them in the main and he's going to, he's going to do like blue flame hellion or hellion drop in the main, hellions on the side. So it's a two pronged hellbat attack. He's building widow mines behind it. He's going to go into two, into widow mine drops. He's going to have a viking trying to clear the path in the main. He wants that overlord and he can commit to it. There's no transfuse nearby. Ooh, bit of miss micro from Oliveira, but actually massive miss micro there. He loses the viking. That's unfortunate. Would have been good if he kept that alive to keep pushing these overlords back. The Hellion's still running around. Medivac comes in, though. Solar doesn't see it. And those Medivacs in the main base, they're dropping in vision. Armory's finished. Those are going to go straight for the drones. Oh! Gets only three of them, though. Can he get more? Eight drones go down. Saves three of the Hellions. Ooh, not a bad first wave, man. He hasn't revealed the Hellbats just yet. Hellion's running in from the left side as well. They're going to try and clear up the creep. Three Widow Mines are being built at a time behind this. He's going mass Widow Mines. But he doesn't have the Metavax building yet. This is a crazy build. Oliveira, a little bit supply block for a moment there. Hellions are still getting damaged, but I, I, you're very vulnerable with this. This all relies on Solar playing defensive. This is a very smart meta play against a guy like Solar that you know is very defensively minded, but Solar's replacing those drones really quickly. The Hellions do get saved. This Metavax is going to pull back. I think just send it home to repair at this point. And he's going to send two. Four Widow Mine drops across the map. The barracks only now starting as bioproduction massively delayed. One Widow Mine drop goes north, one goes south. Four uh, mines on one side, three on the other. If he joins up his Hellions, repairs them, pokes the front at the same time, that's going to be very hard for Solar to deal with. It really is now similar to what Protoss players have been experienced for years. Solar is going to be playing Widow Mine Drop Defense Simulator. This is a test for Solar's abilities. Oliveira is looking for the big mistakes. And I got to say, you can tell he hasn't played this build quite as much. It is not quite as crisp. He's going up to five barracks now. I mean, it's meant to be delayed. It's a big investment, but it just doesn't feel as refined. And you can see Solar's like, oh, what are you doing, man? That third's coming out pretty damn late, isn't it? 
Here we go, guys. Widowmine drop on the top right. Widowmine coming in from the bottom left as well. Double drop. The Hellions are going to fight the Queens. They need to get out of there. Queens take out two Hellions. Really nicely done. Olivera with the first boom boom. The Hellions are kind of a distraction, but Sol is reacting really well. Oh, if he could drop on those guys, that would have been massive. He gets 12 drones to start. Make it 15. Medivac in the main is still there. And there's no detection in some of these bits. Another one comes in the front. 23 workers. Oh, 25 workers. Oh my god. The dream. Oliveira says, you know what? Do you know what was invented in China? Fireworks, mother truckers. Fireworks. That's right. Oh my god. Whoa. He wants to tell us Zerg Cabal my ass. Tyron overpower. Uh, I, I agree, dude. That was that was delicious. 31 drones just went down. Don't get me wrong, there's a lot of widow mines. It's not game over yet. That, that wasn't free. The queens are cleaning up the aliens. The creep is really far forward right now. And there we go. Oh, how about some morphing marines coming up as well? We still got a widow mine in the top right. Sol has taken a long time to clean these up, guys. And now the bio mine parade is going to start through the middle. He's up about what 20 army supply 15 army supply bailing speeds done one one upgrades will finish earlier for zerg so if there's a fight right now it's actually probably better for zerg than terran Oliveira. i like that he's clearing creep and wants to take the momentum but he's got to play a little bit chilled out right now solo's on 70 workers he's on 67 fourth command center's on the way and interestingly because he's got two factories from early game he's already building siege tanks while keeping up the double mine production as a zerg this is very frustrating when you got to deal with both those another widow mine drop in the main i'm sorry i missed it guys 12 more workers go down bio mine moving down that right side widow mine does go off there as well he cleans up the creep the widow mines in the main are getting cleaned up it looks like the medevac will survive at least for now marines gotta get out of there he saves some of them widow mine gets a shot does clip the medevacs and they barely survive one on six life one on next one. Oh, that widow mine just left a bloody smear where that Zerg army used to be. Absolutely disgusting, dude. Heron Imba. Solar, I, I know, man. Protoss players have been talking about the Widow Mine for a long time now. It needs to get nerfed. I, I, welcome, welcome. The Protoss players are feeling you right now. They're all on your side after seeing that slaughter, dude. We are up to 52 drones killed. Yes, 16 Widow Mines went down. But drones are your miners. Losing them is huge because you lose so much income. Fourth base getting taken at the front. 2-2 two, two upgrades are on the way. Don't get me wrong. Solar can come back, but he's at half the army supply. Oliveira, though, pushing across a very big map. Still being very cautious for the moment. He's trying to just force these messy fights. Saves most of the units. A few Widow Mines go down. Solar with very good micro. And Solar needs slick control to hang on. Infestation pits on the way. Hydrogen as well. God forbid the Terran never gets in this area of the map. That's where all of Solar's tech is centralized. Zergling Scout's going to try and get in the backside. So Solon knows about the fourth base. He sees tanks and marines coming forwards. The Queen's trying to respread creep in the middle for the 13th time in a row. The marines coming forward. Oh, the tanks are going to make this a very hard position. Solar's going to have to do something. He needs to either backstab or flank this. And I, I don't know if this position is tenable. His fifth base is at the bottom. So if he loses this base, he loses that as well. Those tanks marching forward. Widowmine, Hellbat, support. Oliveira creating a, a real thrust right in the guts of Solar. Remember, guys, going into this series, Solar had a 90% win rate versus Oliveira. He has won 28 series to four. A devastating advantage head to head. But look at that, his flank gets anticipated. The Banelings get caught before they can come in. We don't mind dropping the right side, not getting microed because he's distracted. The drones try to fight. They quickly decide better of it and run away. He shoves on the front at the same time, still trying to get these units back. A lot of stuff happening at once. Banelings are on the other side of the map. The Widow Mines are still running around in circles behind that mineral line. The Marines still running back and forwards. Both players very excited as this fighting goes on. Solar finally gets back to mining as those Widow Mines do die. Plus three attack is on the way. It is, of course, slight armor upgrade advantage right now for Solar, but these tanks, dude. Captain Chad Hammer and her back up there are doing damage, forcing Solar to engage. One of the tanks is still up. Solar needs to break this position, and he's going to. He breaks the position, but there's another reinforce right behind it. That other tank is going to immediately take that position. The Banelings running off, creep into the meat grinder. Solar's down to just Hydras and Queens. The tank on the high ground, can he take it down? He tries to focus it, but the Marines with the punish stim in. Oliveira will not be going down down in the round of 16 he was down yeah, that first game he got absolutely smashed he was down one to two but he has fought back and what a wild build a two factory hellion build into mass widow mine drops to bring out in game five that is a, such a ballsy build order so much can go wrong with this build but so much can go right and today the fireworks were all flying 
the colors of China and Oliveira. Sola, such a solid player. He's not going to throw in the tile. He's still got his fifth base mining at the bottom. Still an 80 workers. It's never over till it's over. Oh, but oh man, there's just not enough Banelings to ever close the distance. That Baneling run by still on the other side of the map. It's been forgotten. The red hit point Marines. Oliveira stims for the win. And he gets right in there. Oh my god. Oliveira, what does he have to say to all the Zerg players out there? Get Ragnar. Fighting words. GG. That was a sick series. Well played, Oliveira.